Hello crafty friends, it's Donna here and I've got a watercoloured poppies card for you today. The stamp set that I'm using is called Modern Poppies from Paper Rose Studio and I'm trying out a piece of paper from a sample pack of Cotman watercolour paper that I picked up on my recent Tokyo shopping trip. It came with the watercolour paint set that I bought. I'm stamping it in Ink On 3 Fade Out Ink. It's a beautiful pale ink that won't show when I paint it, but it is quite light and so I've stamped it three times so that it will show up on the camera. Actually once or twice is fine for real life. My first plan for this card was not successful. I was thinking that I might like to use some watercolour pens, but I didn't like the way they sat on the paper, and so I've decided to go with these thicker watercolour paints, and I'm much happier with the result. So if you could please just ignore that petal. I'm waiting for it to dry so that I can come back down and cover it up. I hate throwing out things that haven't gone well. I'd much rather see if I can fix them. The watercolour painting process was the same for every single petal on this whole image. I started with a fairly dry brush and some really quite thick paint. And then, again with a fairly dry, clean brush, I've spread that paint a little bit further, then washed off my brush, spread it further again, and repeated that process till I get to the end of the petal. This can be done with one brush, but I often find that I lose a lot of paint washing off my brush to spread the paint and so I decided to go with one brush for the paint and one clean brush this time around. And that process actually worked quite well. This is the only petal that I'm going to show you in real time. And then I've sped everything up to double. I'm not going to keep talking all of the way through this video. I'll give a little bit of an explanation now and then you can sit back and relax and enjoy it. You can see that I'm jumping around on the image, choosing different petals that don't touch each other. I'm trying to let each area dry before I come back again to paint what's right next to it. I'm putting my darker colours in the middle, and also where I see that one petal is sitting behind another petal, I'm also adding darker colour there to give a little bit of a look of shadow. I won't show you the painting of every single petal, but I've left in quite a few of different shapes and sizes. In a more realistic painting, we'd be using a lot more different colours, a lot more depth in the shadows, and a lot more highlights. But for this card, I've wanted to do something that is repetitive, meditative, and that anybody can do. I'm not worrying too much about the centres at the moment. I'll come back and deal with those again later. And when I get to that, I'll step back in and talk some more.
come back again. Where the petals are turning over, I've chosen to use a lighter colour. And so I'm just watering down that exact same colour so that I start with less paint. And I'm going to fill in a bunch of little places like that and then get on with the leaves. I've mixed my own colour of green. I looked at pictures of poppies online and tried to match what I saw as best I could. to add a little bit of base colour to the centres of the flowers and then work on a couple of other details while that dries. It took me a little while to work out what I wanted to do with the leaves because poppy leaves have tiny little hairs all over them. Once I painted the leaves and stems in light and medium tones I took a little bit of darker paint and, and just put tiny little dots here and there on the leaf to blur the edges and give the look of those fine hairs. I was too scared to do it all over the stems as well though. This next step is completely optional, but I'm going to add just a little bit of definition between a couple of petals. I'm not painting in the whole thing. My lines start and stop, and there's just a little bit of color there. I've done it on some of the flowers and not on others. So it's entirely possible to leave this step out if you're worried about your brush or your hand not making such fine strokes. I've used a very dark brown to just dab in a few of the centres for the poppy. I'm using the packaging from the stamp on the side as my guide as to the general direction of these little dabs of my paintbrush. And then I'm using my black marker to add in a few lines. I chickened out on the paintbrush at this stage. I've chosen is quite a dark colour and so I keep a little stash of card inserts in my drawer and add one of these whenever I have a dark coloured base. And what you see now is a mock-up of the card. Not everybody's a fan of spatter and so I laid all the elements out including my white embossed sentiment and took a photo without gluing anything down before taking the panel back to my craft room for a good dose of spatter in the red and the green and also some white gouache mixed with water. I'll leave you with some photos of the fully complete card. Feel free to like and subscribe and I will see you again soon. Bye for now.